All right, welcome everybody. Good afternoon, and thank you very much for being here. My name is Gary Neal, Executive Director of the Council of Canadians, which is Canada's largest social justice organization with roughly 75,000 supporters from coast to coast to coast. With me today is Peggy Walsh Craig from North Bay. Peggy is an elector in the riding of Nipissing to Miskaming. And also here is Stephen Schreibman, a public interest lawyer with the firm Sack Goldblatt Mitchell, who is representing the applicants in this matter. Earlier this month, I announced that the Council of Canadians was launching a campaign to invite Canadians to let us know what dirty tricks had been played on them during the May 2011 federal election and to advise them of legal rights they have as an elector. Sadly for Canadian democracy, hundreds of Canadians responded to our invitation with stories of fraud, harassment, and other voter suppression techniques. Eight Canadians have courageously stepped forward to tell their stories in the court in seven ridings. <clears throat> Council of Canadians is announcing today that it is supporting these Canadians who have applied to the court under the Canada Elections Act to annul the 2011 election results in these ridings. Don Valley East, Elmwood Transcona, Nipissing Temiskaming, Saskatoon Rosetown Bigger, Vancouver Island North, Winnipeg South Centre, and Yukon. The Council has selected these ridings because electors came forward and because the margin of victory in each was relatively small. Thus, there's a reasonable basis to believe that the irregularities have affected the results. We have some good evidence about the effectiveness of providing misleading or harassing information by robocalls and believe it is sufficient in these ridings to convince a judge to annul the results. We have academic research which indicates that voter suppression techniques can reduce voter turnout by 3%, which is roughly 2,500 voters in a normal riding. Peggy. Thank you, Gary. Uh, what happened was that shortly uh, before the election, I received a telephone call, which was an automated call uh, with a pre-recorded message. Uh, the voice was claiming to be from Elections Canada. I remember quite que clearly that it said that due to higher than expected voter turnout, my polling place had been changed. I was confused about the call and I ended up voting in the advance poll just because I uh, felt that, that I knew where to go for that. Uh, a few weeks ago I heard about the uh, inquiry in Guelph and I realized that the call I had received was fraudulent. Uh, earlier in the campaign I indicated that I would not be voting for the Conservative Party. Uh, given what I uh, have heard in the media and my experience, I uh, believe that these calls were connected. I am someone who takes my civic responsibility uh, very seriously. I was astounded to discover that these tactics have been used to such a wide extent and that it has affected the outcome in my writing and potentially others. Uh, in Nipissing to Miskaming, the Liberal incumbent uh, lost by only 18 votes uh, to someone who had never run at the federal level before. And that's why I decided to become an applicant in this case. Thanks, Peggy. <clears throat> this is not the end of the robocalls affair. As I've said before, the victims here are individual electors. We believe that through these court actions, all Canadians will be able to find out exactly what happened and who was responsible. Being able to participate in elections is at the very heart of our democracy. It's a fundamental right enjoyed by every Canadian and it's protected by law. And the Council is committed to fighting to preserve that basic democratic principle. We continue to invite Canadians to share their experiences with us as well as with Elections Canada. Thank you. We'd be happy to answer your questions. Yes. yes. I do have a question first for you, uh, just about the timing, because you said you you received that fake Election Canada call, and then you end up voting for the advance poll call. 
but it's it seems to me that the uh, voting in advance it takes place a couple, a couple of days before the actual uh, polling day. So are, when exactly did you receive that pay call? It, it seems to me that it would be very early during the campaign. So can you clarify? It, it was, I don't know the exact day, but it was uh, about a week before election day. Uh, I recall it because I uh, was uh, planning, uh, I knew I would not be in town on election day, so I know that it was before election day that I received the call. If I may, uh, if you don't mind going into some detail on both calls, both calls? because it would be interesting to know, particularly with the reports that some of the Guelph calls went elsewhere, including as far away as North Bay. It would be interesting to know details of first the robocall were telling you which number to press if you supported the conservatives. Do you remember any detail about what exactly it said? And secondly, uh, the misdirection call, uh, whether that was a man or a woman's voice. Do you remember where it told you to go? Because it'd be interesting to know if it told you to go to the Quebec Street Hall at Guelph. <laughs> right? See what I'm getting at? Mm -hmm. So if you could spell out whatever you can remember about each call, so that because it, it, it may be sort of forensically important. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, first call, which uh, was asking me to identify uh, my vote, uh, was uh, a few weeks before the election. I don't have the date. I only remember it was an automated call instructing me to pick a number to, to indicate my response about whether or not I was going to support the Conservative Party. Uh, the second phone call... Uh, Who was calling? Uh, I don't have caller ID. <laughs> and uh, for the second call, uh, I um, uh, the address was not far from the original polling place. It was in North Bay, and uh, North Bay is not so big, so it was uh, it, it would only have meant a difference of five or ten minutes away from the original place. Was a man or a woman? Mm, I do not know. English both? Uh, just... uh, uh, no, English only. The question for you: Can you uh, clarify for for the uh, six other writings what is the nature of the allegation? Uh, yeah. Um, each one is, of course, slightly different, uh, but there is a common theme, and the common theme is uh, uh, robocalls, either on election day or slightly before election day, uh, which indicate they're from Elections Canada, and indicate that the polling location has changed. Uh, most of the applicants also previously had received calls asking if they would be voting for the Conservative Party or not, and uh, most indicated they would not be. Uh, there is one applicant uh, who did not receive such an earlier call, although she said her uh, partner may have received it on her cell phone. But she received the information that the polling location had changed and as a consequence she did not exercise her vote because the new polling station she was told was well away from where she lived and she has no vehicle and so she didn't vote just as terry asked uh, in these calls was it always uh, advising people to go to the quebec mall <laughs> in guelph or was it a change of location in that particular no no it was a change of location locally in each case so in each riding, it was a, another location within the riding. I've, I've interviewed a number of people uh, around this in, as the questionnaires were coming in. In fact, I personally spoke to a lot of people. And it was always a, lo a local location. It could have been you know, 20 kilometers away or 15 kilometers away. Some of them were live calls, and people actually debated with the caller, <laughs> saying, wait a minute, no, I voted already. And the, the uh, call said, well, if your wife hasn't voted, she won't be able to vote unless she goes to this new location. So it was definitely a coordinated campaign that involved misdirection locally. Did you get any that identified themselves as conservative party calling? Uh, I don't recall, and I don't believe that any of the applicants, in terms of the misdirection. It's kind of crazy, but it did happen in some places. Yes, in terms of the misdirection, I don't recall whether we had any of our applicants who, it was all Elections Canada as far. From something you said a moment ago. How, can you give us an idea of how many people, I know you've got seven in your court case, uh, how many people, uh, with as closely, as accurately as you can tell us, did you speak to? 
and how many of those got both kinds of calls, the voter ID call and the misdirection call? Um, uh, first of all, there's nine applicants in seven ridings. <clears throat> I misspoke earlier. I was corrected by Stephen. So we have nine individual applicants. <clears throat> we received hundreds of responses to our survey request. Uh, and uh, we spoke to uh, perhaps 100 people as a consequence of that in various different writings across the country. Uh, the results of that survey w w really covered a full spectrum from people who were very clear in their minds about what happened, who seemed very credible, um, who had received two telephone calls, to those who had only received a misdirected, uh, misdirection call uh, when pushed, some of them argued that their politics are very well known as to be not conservative party. Uh, some said this is a very small place <laughs> and everyone knows, you know, particularly where you are politically active. Uh, to some who uh, don't, do not recall any prior call, <clears throat> but simply a misdirection call. Maybe they had a long side. So over here. Uh, can you describe what kind of contact the applicants, the nine applicants have had with Elections Canada? Uh, Peggy has reported her case to Elections Canada. Uh, I'm not sure if we know for the other applicants who has, yeah? Five of the uh, other applicants have, five in total, have also reported to Elections Canada. Have they had any kind of uh, callbacks from investigators? Have they been interviewed? Uh, anything like that? Uh, so I made my uh, complaint to Elections Canada by email on March 1st. And on March 3rd, which was a Saturday, I received a call from uh, Tim uh, Charbonneau uh, at Elections Canada asking me to review the content of my complaint. And uh, then he indicated that uh, I may or may not hear from them again, uh, and um, he, that was pretty much it. He indicated that he was working long and hard on the issue because, uh, all, working all weekend because of the volume of calls, uh, com uh, complaints, I mean. Yeah. So I'm wondering if you could, Ivan, could tell us about the, the legal um, action and the process you anticipate. <laughs> Well, we, the applications were filed last Friday and this Monday. And so the next steps in the process are to serve the applications on uh, the chief electoral officer, the local returning officer, the attorney general, and all the candidates that ran in the riding. And then to assemble and serve our evidence within, we'll be doing that in the next month or so. Um, all of the applications were filed in the federal court. Uh, we will be writing to the court to ask the court to manage the cases together uh, and then uh, with the benefit of case management which we hope the court will agree uh, is appropriate in the circumstances we'll set out a timetable for uh, proceeding with the cases and the basis on which you are so first of all they are different cases but you're hoping to get them grouped as one case they are all, they're all separate cases and they're filed pursuant to Section 524 of the Canada Elections Act which empowers a, an elector to contest the outcome of an election in their respective ridings. So they're separate applications brought on behalf of individual electors who are entitled to vote in those ridings. Uh, but the fact situation in the cases is quite similar and the evidence will be uh, similar in some respects, certainly the expert evidence we have. So in our view, our, our request of the court will be based on the fact that there are these common elements and it would be efficient uh, to manage them together in some fashion. The other question, um, Gary mentioned that you have received more than just the, the nine applications and the seven writings. Uh, was there an effort made then to have sort of uniform types of complaints, the applicants all having a similar experience? Was that something you did a pre-selection or a pre-culling for the point of grouping these all together in the legal action? So they similarities? Because you probably got disparate <coughs> groups of people saying different, having different experiences. Well, I mean, the only focus, if or narrowing, if, there, if you want to describe it that way, was to canvas people about the types of activity that had been reported in the media, which were to be in receipt of a call of one type or another, either harassing the elector during the election campaign